Hello everyone and welcome to another really awesome game from round 6 of this year's Tata Steel Masters edition. It is Fabiano Caruana versus Gukesh and uh, Fabi has been having a great tournament so far. He has um, a win in 4 draws and Gukesh he could be having a better tournament but okay it's a pretty, a pretty uh, a tough opposition here. He got 3 draws and uh, 2 losses. Uh, the losses being to Ding in round 1 and to Anish in round 2 and this game so it's, it's a really weird one you guys you guys will definitely like it so uh, let's check it out fabi with the white pieces opens with d4 we have knight to f6 uh c4 e6 knight to f3 uh avoiding the nimzo and now pawn to d5 we have knight the, the queen's gambit declined we have knight to c3 and now bishop to b4 so the next best thing oh, as we usually say Daragos in defense and uh, black's been having a lot of success with Daragos in end with the nimzo uh lately so it makes sense that uh, especially young players are choosing such uh, such openings and the uh, main uh, ideas here on how to challenge this uh, are bishop to g5 c captures on d5 queen to a4 with check also e3 can be played queen to b3 is also possible uh, but uh, for the game queen to a4 check officially it's uh, like the third most most popular continuation so of course gukesh knows how to tackle this we have knight to c6 e3 and now a uh, gukesh castles we have a uh, queen to c2 uh, as the queen is no longer useful on this diagonal uh, and now knight to e7 and interestingly uh, this is um uh, like the seventh most popular move in this position but the engine really loves it for some reason people just don't play it uh, but Gukesh obviously did uh, a lot of work on it uh, and uh, sorry uh, and uh, he goes for knight to e7 not knight to d7 knight to e7 uh, we have bishop to d2 now the knight is no longer pinned and pawn to b6 now preparing to go after the c4 pawn we have a3 and now uh, not retreating with the bishop to allow something like b4 but rather b captures on c3 we have bishop captures and now bishop to a6 again stops b4 uh, as the c4 pawn is hanging so we have pawn to b3 and now rook to c8 preparing to advance the pawn to c5 and there is a, a game from 2016 uh, between Boris Grachev and Matthias Blubaum uh, that reached this position where bishop to d3 was played and it makes sense it put, uh, puts pressure on the h7 pawn also it stops knight to e4 but that's not what Fabi played in this game here Fabi played rook to d1 and it is now as of move 12 that we have a completely new game and it's very interesting how the game continues uh, because the difference uh, a very obvious one with uh, rook to d1 and bishop to d3 the one that Boris Grachev played is that white is not controlling the e4 square and here Gukesh could definitely drop a knight to e4 uh, it, it would be very tricky for white to handle this he goes after the bishop on c3 and of course you don't want to give up the bishop pair for nothing so you're going to retreat it and now let's say you strike in the center with c5 and now if bishop to d3 uh, one might even consider pawn to f5 and it's a very very active position for black with the uh, both light square and dark square bishop currently uh, of a very limited power uh, but okay in the game after rook to d1 Gukesh started with c5 right away and you will see how this is much much different than uh, the idea that we've just shown uh, Fabi plays d captures on c5 now he opens up his dark square bishop rook captures on c5 and now queen to b2 now putting pressure on the knight on f6 six uh, and it's very tricky to um, uh, deal with this if you move the knight you lose the g7 pawn so probably you should play something like knight to e8 but that just looks weird uh, another thing uh, if you if you play something like knight to g6 uh, so the queen protects the knight uh, it's a bit of a more active square then you run into bishop b4 and your rooks uh, are now in trouble so it's hard to say uh, how, how one should go about this but uh, Gukesh goes queen to c8 it's a very weird move uh, that gives up the the uh, g6 pawn and also allows Fabi to mess up his pawn structure so let's see what Gukesh had in mind here we have bishop captures on f6 by Fabi g captures queen captures and now just knight to g6 now getting ready to start capturing on uh, c4 uh, the idea is uh, pretty clear um, uh, Fabi's king is still on e1 and uh, the, the king could be a bit vulnerable there uh, but Fabi just starts the king side attack pawn to h4 uh, he wants to play pawn to h5 then pawn to h6 and checkmate the black king so it's hard to say who is really attacking here we have d captures on c4 by gukesh now pawn to h5 uh, we have rook to f5 you have to uh, get the queen off of this diagonal somehow queen to c3 and now knight to e7 
And uh, the problem is you cannot go for C captures on B3. There's just too much stuff hanging. If you play C captures on B3, of course, just queen captures. Now the, the bishop here will also hang if you capture with the rook. So you have to capture with the bishop. Uh, but now you just lose the knight here. And uh, even though the engine uh, kind of says that um, uh, you really don't have uh, uh, all that much uh, uh, better than this. But knight to e7 is a little bit better. Of course, the move that Gukesh plays. Uh, and now Fabi plays b captures on c4. I will just uh, for fun show you a line uh, as this is a classical game uh, that starts with e4. And the point is uh, the rook really should not move uh, from uh, from this uh, file. Uh, you really don't want to give up control of f6 because queen to f6 and h6 uh, just uh, ended the game. Black will get checkmated. So you're going to place uh, something like rook to f4. Now queen to e3, you go after the rook. And after queen c7 defends the rook g3, let's say, rook to g4. Uh, now you're going to play bishop to e2 and just move the knight and continue harassing this rook. So this is one way uh, you could play this. It doesn't even matter if you trade queens here, for example, uh, queen captures b, captures now just knight to d2, attacks the rook, and once the rook moves, you're even going to play rook to h4. Take the g4 square away from the black rook and now play knight to f3 once again. So there's really no good square for this rook. Like let's say c3, black wants to trade some pieces here, you don't care, just knight to f3. And now if captures attacking your rook, just king captures, the rook is still hanging, uh, no squares on the uh, on the fifth rank for that rooks so are going to have to go back rook to g7 now h6 rook to g6 and okay you get to keep the rook but now the pawns will start falling and it's a very passive square for the rook uh, so after this knight to e7 move, uh, so definitely something that Fabi could have gone for. He goes for b captures and c4, and now Gukesh uh, gets into the game a little bit. Now pawn to f6, uh, and now you no longer have to worry. Now if the rook is attacked, you can move the rook anywhere, and the f6 square is no longer available for the white queen. Uh, so bishop to e2. Uh, we have rook to c5 now, continuing to put pressure on this pawn. Uh, knight to d2, and now bishop back to b7, putting pressure on the g2 pawn, but Fabi just plays the very nice rook to f, uh, rook to h4. Now rook ca bishop captures on g2 uh, is impossible due to rook to g4 check winning that bishop. So here pawn to e5 by Gukesh, uh, and now knight to e4. Uh, the knight is, uh, is a very nasty looking beast here, uh, also eyeing that d6 square. So Gukesh captures captures it, bishop captures on e4, we have rook captures on e4, and now queen to e6, getting the queen into the game, also preparing moves like f5, here Fabi plays queen to d2, uh, and now rook to a5, going after the a3 pawn, uh, rook to g4 check, we have king to f7, and now pawn to h6, preparing queen to, uh, rook to g7 check, uh, and here Gukesh played knight to g6, but there really aren't any better moves, uh, of course you cannot go after the pawn, if you go after the pawn you get checkmated that's uh, very clear here you're just gonna uh, be this will be met with a queen to the eighth checkmate uh, but Gukas played knight to g6, he stopped this, but now uh, Fabi has a very, very nice winning uh, idea here. Feel free to pause the video and try to find this move uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this wild brilliancy. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is pawn to c5. That's the good stuff. Clearing the c4 square for the white bishop. And now there really isn't all that much for Gukash to do. If any of you, uh, aside from c5, uh, found bishop to f3, uh, then you are you you're just uh, much much stronger than an uh, uh, you know uh, a very strong grandmaster not just a very strong grandmaster a former U.S. champion a former World Chess Championship challenger uh, like Bishop to F3 is so, so strong that it's impossible to see why it's good because okay you're, you're threatening Bishop D5 but look at this King to E7. And now, uh, what's the what's the idea? How do you how do you continue this? Rook g3. Now you want to clear the g4 square for the bishop. Black will play f5. Now you play bishop to h5. This is so weird uh, that you you still don't understand why uh, why this is so good for white. Pawn to f4. It seems like black is the one who's winning here, but not really. Just rook g4. And now look at this. F captures. F captures. And there's no good move for black here. Whatever you play, you're just gonna get. Uh, uh, completely destroyed, but that's uh, not a very human uh, thing to play. Uh, so instead, uh, after this knight to g6 move, Fabi just played pawn to c5, and this uh, 
uh, cannot be met with, with anything. Now rook captures on a3, of course, uh, will be met with bishop to c4, and uh, now you just have to give up the queen. Queen captures on c4, and now let's say queen to d7 check, knight to d7, and of course you don't pick up the queen, you deliver checkmate. That's the idea. So after c5, Lukash has to take back, rook captures on c5. Now he guards the c4 square, but the real idea was queen to d7 with check. And now, after queen captures on d7, rook captures on d7 check was played king to g8 and now rook captures on a7 uh, also one of the reasons why fabi really wanted to get uh, that rook away from the a file uh, but even uh you don't have to play this like the position is so strong you could even play rook to c4 seems like a weird move to play uh, but the position is so winning for white you just don't care uh, if rook captures bishop captures if not you just capture the rook and again you get the c4 square for your bishop you cannot uh block this you have to play Play king to h8 now just rook captures on a7 and you're never getting out of this this is just um uh, i mean uh, as, as such a passive position it, it's absolutely terrible if the rook ever moves from the back rank uh, the pawn covers this the bishop covers this the king is completely boxed in any back rank check will be a back rank checkmate so instead after king to g8 the rook captures on a7 was played by fabi everything here is winning rook to c1 check rook king to d2 and now rook to h1 going after that uh, h6 pawn uh, but now fabi just prepares to double up on the seventh rank rook to b4 uh, rook captures on h6 rook captures on b6 and now rook to h2 uh, you, if you try to block with rook to f7 again you run into bishop to c4 so that's impossible so rook to h2 was played but now just rook b to b7 and he was in this position on move 36 that uh, Gukesh resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here uh there, there's really nothing to try like you you could uh, get, get out of check but now comes let's say bishop to g4 and uh, how are you playing this you you can never uh, capture on g2 because you get checkmated rook captures followed by the other rook going to g7 checkmate and if something like rook to d8 with check you're just gonna move the king and if knight to f8 okay you control the h7 pawn but just g3 now black is without any targets if pawn to e4 bishop to f5 puts more pressure here puts more pressure on e4 and if rook to e8 rook to f7 there's just nothing to play here you're going after this pawn you will start advancing the a pawn and okay Gukesh could have prolonged this but he knows that it, I mean this is just self-torture he, he will just be suffering for, for no reason uh, he can just rest up for uh, for the next game so yeah very nicely done by Fabi uh, getting his second win uh, in the tournament uh, now uh, it's it's uh, he's currently leading in the tournament but some of the games are of course still uh, being in play like Abdus Satrovs and uh, Giris so we'll see uh, what happens yesterday I kind of showed you the wrong standings because Lebon's game was still in play uh, so sorry about that uh, in the next video uh, that I that I uh, cover about round six I will show you the the precise uh, standing so uh, re really sorry about that uh, but yeah very nicely done by Fabi Fabi, again, it's uh, uh, hard to say, but uh, Fabi really confused him with this rook to d1 move. Like, bishop to d3 uh, seems very natural. You, you, of course, know what the white is doing. It's a very nice developing move. But Fabi just played rook to d1, and he kept his king in the center of the board for the entire game, which uh, sort of gave, gave Gukic the incentive uh, to try and sacrifice a little bit of material to go for the attack. But, um, like I said, if uh, instead of this c5 move, he just goes for knight to e4, it's a, it's a completely different game. Uh, now, like we said, bishop to a1, c5, and now if bishop to d3, now pawn to f5. And this is much, much different than uh, what, what we saw in the game and probably would have uh, ended much, much different. But yeah, rook to d1, always a very tricky move ever since uh, Anderson's game. Uh, but yeah, always, always uh, to take care after rook a to d1 is played and even before it is played. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Very nicely done by Fabi. Uh, I would like to thank Ravishing Reptiles YouTube. I love uh, Adrian and Jude. Easy Ovens is the best. Derek King and Richard F. Sayage for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Tata Steel uh, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.